and the French Grand Prix is go. And Berger is left. Berger is very slow off the line. Mansell leads. Prost is second. Piquet is third. Senna is fourth, so Piquet has already passed Senna, but Nigel Mansell, as they come down the Mistral Straits, the shortened Mistral Straits, at the end of which they reach over 200 miles an hour, leads with Piquet now up into second ahead of Prost. And as you can see, Piquet, now on lap 14, is making a charge and is very, very much closer to race. In fact, he's right with race leader Nigel Mansell. Yes, that's right. M Mansell's having a bit of trouble with the traffic there because of course the three and a half litre cars uh, although very much slower on the long streets are very nimble and quick through the corners and so they're very difficult to lap and that gave Nelson a chance to close up it's also given Prost a bit of a chance to close the gap but up front a titanic battle now developing between the two Williams there they are followed by Alain Prost who has made up a two-second gap, lap 30, and tyre changes and the time they take are going to be absolutely critical then in this race with the first three so closely together and the first tyre change for the leaders must come shortly. They're going to make certainly one stop. I remind you that both Mansell and Piquet last year uniquely made two because Patrick Head, the Williams designer who is not here incidentally, presumably watching us now, calculated and correctly so that they would benefit more from fresh rubber twice than they would lose and pk went for the pits then you just saw him coming out of the last corner moving over to the right hand side of the road so pk as you absolutely correctly predicted murray has come in just as you called it so pk in for his first set of tires at least he's just wiping his visor having followed those cars and a pretty good stop cross cross into the pit cross goes in for his tires so Mansell, therefore, the last of the front runners to make his tyre stop. Now, this is vital to, for McLaren. They can get Prost out into the lead if they're quick enough on the stop. And it's a superb stop. Here is Mansell. Mansell into the pits on lap 35. Now, the quickest stop we have so far is 7.02 seconds, that of Alain Prost. This is going to be the most important pit stop of the race, and it's already slower. But nine seconds for Nigel Mansell on lap 36. And this is going to be really interesting because PK leads. Well, there's a long way to go yet. And Mansell is right up with Prost. He's coming out of his slipstream. He's going to try to go through on the inside and he does it on lap 41 as you look at race leader PK the order is PK leading Mansell by some three and a half seconds and race driving these days is not just a question of foot hard to the boards and go flat out for the whole race or as near to it as you can it is a question of driving with your brains as well as your feet and through goes Nigel Mansell PK tries to hold him back Lovely bit of driving, Nigel Mansell takes the lead. And there goes PK. that was PK peeling off the pit, so Nelson's decided he wants tyres. I presume it's just tyres. Coming in very quickly indeed. Now he's not going to be able to get out in front of Prost either. So are they all going to go for another stop? Well, we saw them say tyres OK on Mansell's board. Interestingly, it will be Will, will Nigel go in, and this is a bad stop. They've got some problem around uh, the back of the car. Yeah, I think maybe he stalled the engine. It looked like they'd put the outboard starter on, onto it. And that's what's brought him right up onto Prost's tail. Now, the fresh tyres, of course, will give him a lot more grip. I don't think he'll be able to catch Mansell in the time available, but uh, with his straight-line speed, I don't think Prost will be any problem for him to gobble up. He's having a look down the inside, but he only really has to wait around this twisty section till he gets to the pits. And Prost, in fact has let him go. The seconds are ticking away. PK goes past me, and the gap is increasing again now. It's up to 14 seconds. PK has definitely shot his bolt from Port Erin in the Isle of Man, waves his fist, wins the French Grand Prix for the second year in succession. Prost comes up right alongside Mansell and Prost leads.
an absolutely meteoric start from the Frenchman. That is something that we're not used to seeing. The Williams Hondas usually get away very quick, but already Prost has lost the lead. I can't tell you which of the Williams it is at the moment, but into the right hander they go sweeping round, down to Beckett's, now onto Chapel, and it's going to be down to Stowe at 200 miles an hour. Everybody has gone away cleanly and safely. No problems at the first corner. And it's PK leading. Mansell coming through to take second position away from Prost with Senna in fourth place. So Nelson PK is certainly giving the lie to people who said that he was not up to Nigel Mansell now. And I said it last week, I must admit. The gap which was over four seconds at one time between Mansell in second place and PK the leader is now visual. Nigel Mansell is coming in at the end of the 35th lap to change tyres and it's going to be critical his time compared with that of Nelson Piquet if the Brazilian subsequently decides to stop for tyres. Prost's stop was 8.1 seconds. He's the main contender who's been in. The front's on very quickly indeed and it's just under 10 seconds for Nigel Mansell Call it 9.5 in round figures. There is Nigel Mansell. He's 28 seconds behind Nelson Piquet, but of course that'll come right down when Piquet makes his tyre stop. So Mansell now on fresh rubber would hope to be able to lap even more quickly, and certainly he has. 1 minute 11.9, and that is yet again a new lap record so you can see the difference that fresh rubber makes so Mansell is inching up on Nelson Piquet and it looks as if Piquet is going to try and stay out and to confirm the sense the possible sense of that decision Piquet has responded and is lapping a lot quicker now than he was three or four laps ago and is down into the 111s so if he can maintain even just half a second a lap uh, less pace than Mansell and he can keep that going to the end he's going to win still 23.4 so just over a second a lap Nigel Mansell has got to find to catch Nelson Piquet and then of course he's got to find something extra to get past him yes and Mansell is really starting to catch Piquet fast now he's uh, reading him in faster than the schedule required the gap is now under 17 seconds and another very very fast lap indeed for Mansell he's now lapping over a second a lap quicker than Nelson Piquet Mansell took nearly three seconds out of Piquet's lead on that lap. Piquet now leads by 13 and a half seconds. And if Mansell goes on at the rate he's going on now and can get past Piquet when he gets right up behind him, he is going to win because there are 14 laps still to go. And Mansell has broken the lap record again. Lap record Mansell 19.9. How the speed has gone up from about 148 and the lap record has come tumbling down 1 minute 10.9, 10.7, 10.5, 10 10.4 and now 9.9 and this is where Mansell will be looking to challenge PK will hold the inside line and, oh! and Mansell is through well once again as the Union Jacks wave and the crowds roar Nigel Mansell has demonstrated psychological superiority over his double world champion teammate Nelson Piquet. What a fantastic drive. It was a private battle between the two Williamses and once again Nigel has put it over Nelson Piquet very emphatically. He did the pit stop. They both uh, they gambled on the quite different tactics of course. Nelson trying to go through the race without a tyre change but the storming drive that Nigel put in after his pit stop just pulverizing the lap record, lapping over a second quicker than anybody else on the circuit. was uh, tremendous entertainment to watch. Mansell has won the British Grand Prix. Nelson Piquet finishes in second place. And the British crowd break ranks. They're marvellous at this.